Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors. Today we're gonna to be tying one of my favorite Euronyms, the Waltz Worm. This fly is incredibly effective. It helps put a ton of fish in the net and it's super simple to tie. This is a fly that I always have in my box and it has become a real go-to pattern for us. Okay, so before we get into the fly tying video, I wanted to go through a couple of updates. So a couple of weeks ago, we launched a video, Euronym Fing, the five biggest mistakes we see. And the feedback on that video has been absolutely incredible. Um, we've, in a couple of weeks, we've gotten about 500 comments, I think, at this point. And we had specifically asked people for, do you want to see more Euronym Fing content? Do you want to see a Euronym Fing basics for beginners? And the feedback is overwhelming and, and outstandingly, yes, we want to see that content all the way from the basics. We want to see a ton of detail all the way up through the advanced stuff. So what we're gonna do, that is not all gonna fit into one video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a series of Euronymphing videos that's gonna bring you from the basics and then we're gonna go into more of the advanced techniques and kind of move along. So if you're new to Euronymphing, you can start at the beginning, you can kind of like learn everything from scratch all the way up through kind of demonstrating and talking and teaching about all the different things that we, that we should be doing when you're Euronymphing and understanding everything that goes into it. Um, and then even if you're not new to Euronymphing, Thing. Hopefully there's going to be enough detail and enough for you to pick up that it's going to be useful information for pretty much anybody who's out there doing this. So anyway, um, there's going to be a ton of work that goes into that. We're already filming, but there's just an absolute ton of footage that we need to capture for all this stuff. Um, so stick with us. We are going to be putting those out hopefully before too long. I just want to let you guys know that those are definitely coming, but there's going to be a lot of work involved in getting there. And speaking of that video, we were doing a giveaway on that video of the white dog snapback hat. So um, we are going to do that drawing at the end of this video. So we're randomly selecting a comment from the Euronym Fing Five Biggest Mistakes video. And we will be selecting that winner at the end of this video. All right, let's get into the fly tying video of the waltz worm. All right, so this is the waltz worm. This is a really effective fly. It's really easy to tie and it just puts a lot of fish in the net. So I highly recommend having a row of these in your box. Um, what I would say is make any modifications you want. So what I'll do, I'm tying this one with a hotspot collar. So maybe it's considered a sexy waltz because it has the hotspot on it, but I start with a, a black nickel bead. I do a hotspot and like a hair's ear type dubbing. Um, if you wanted to change this up and make it more natural, use a more natural color thread like brown, tan, maybe even an olive depending on the um, dubbing that you're using. But I, I usually tie a bunch in kind of with the hot spot and I tie a bunch that are a little more natural looking. Hot spot can be a good attractor, but if you're fishing pressured fish, sometimes they don't like that and you want to go more natural. So anyway, let's get started with this guy. Take that one out of the vise and we'll put a new hook and bead into the vise. All right, so just to start, this is a size 14 jig style hook. This is a saber hook. Um, I tend to use these hooks. I like them a lot. Um, again, size 14 jig style hook. That'll be a good start. And then the bead I'm using. So the beads, depends on how heavy I want to make these. Typically, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch tungsten bead in black nickel. Um, in this particular case, my water is a little high and I had trouble getting those flies down a little bit yesterday. So I'm going to go a little heavier. I want to do a 5 30 seconds to black nickel tungsten bead. Um, again, this is all about just the fact that my water is a little too high and I need something with a little more weight to be able to get these guys down. Okay. Okay. So speaking of weight, I want to add some more weight to this fly rather than just the tungsten bead. So I will use a few wraps of lead wire. In this case, I want to make them heavier, so I'm going to use a .025. If I wanted to make them just slightly heavier and not quite as heavy, I would use a .015, or maybe even a .010 and kind of wrap the length. Um, in this case, I'm going to use that .025. This is also going to help secure that bead in place because I'm going to slide that lead up into there, but I'm going to start with maybe five or six wraps as tightly wrapped as possible. Okay, we're going to break that lead off, and then we're going to slide that right up into the bead. And that's going to hold that bead in place. It's not going to keep it from slipping down, and it's going to keep it all in place. So I'm going to keep those wraps nice and tight. I'm going to use my fingernail and break off the last piece of that 
lead and we're going to jam that right up in there and I got a little bit of a piece that happens I gotta jam that up in there and wrap it tight I do not want any loose pieces as we're doing this I want that lead as tight as possible so I just use my thumbnail and now I've got it in place okay all right so we are going to start with some thread um, so because I'm tying this with a hot spot I'm going to use a thread that's a little brighter I'm going to use a fire orange this is going to be the my hot spot color just a six aught thread if I were tying more natural obviously I'd be using more of a tan or a brown or potentially even an olive so what I'm going to do to start I'm going to use this thread and I'm going to start building a dam behind this thread or behind the lead and what this is going to do is first of all going to hold that lead in place because I want to make sure that that is up into the bead and it's keeping that bead in place and it's also going to help me build a little bit of a taper okay I want a nice smooth taper as I'm going up this all right that is set trim off the last piece here all right so now so the, the gold red hair's ear is very similar to this fly um, if I'll kind of go through the differences. If I were to tie a gold rib hair's ear, I would be tying in a tailing material of a pheasant tail. I'd use about three fibers and tie that in at the end of the fly. Um, I would also use a gold wire instead of the wire that I'm going to use. The gold wire is more like your gold ribbed hair's ear. And I might potentially use a gold bead as well. But because I'm tying the waltz, I'm not going to do those things. So the next step around the waltz is you tie in some copper wire. So I'm using a copper wire. Um, it's just an ultra wire. And um, what I do when I, when I tie these is I don't use the spool when I tie them. I, I cut a piece, you know, that's kind of long. This one's actually quite a bit shorter now because I've tied a bunch of flies with it. But it, the, the spools are just way too hard to work with. They're, they're messy. I, I don't like doing that. And then if you cut pieces that are too short, you're just going to end up wasting material. So I try to not do that wherever possible. So I'm going to tie this wire in right at the back side, right where the lead ends. And I'm going to bring that down to around the, the hook bend. I'm going to leave the wire hanging off the back. Okay, now we get into the dubbing part. And this is, unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a dubbing situation because my normal dubbing um, I ran out of. So the hairline mat, um, hair's ear dubbing is what I would typically use. I tied a bunch in the laser dub. Um, it's a little fine for me. I like it a little buggier, a little more guard hair sticking out, and this just didn't do it for me. Um, and then I had this Rabitron assortment, and this actually is working out pretty well. So I'm using that. I'm using kind of like a hair's ear color. It's a little bit grayer maybe, but I, I like it. It's been working out well, so I'm going to use that. There are some pretty good fibers in this. So we're going to start with that. All right, when it comes to dubbing, the trick with dubbing is always to start sparse we want to tie it tight and not a lot at a time okay so we're going to spin that on there you can use dubbing wax you guys probably heard me say this 100 times i don't use dubbing wax just because i tie these tight i just wet the, my fingertips as i spin um as i spin the uh the dubbing on there and we want to keep it even and and pretty tight i need a little bit more okay and as i get to the head of that fly I'm not going to make it thicker, but I am going to maybe spin it a little bit looser because I want some of those guard hairs um, toward the top. Okay. All right. So we're going to work our way back. I want to time it so that when my thread gets to the back, I'm just starting to get my color down. Okay. So now once I have my dubbing down, we're going to work to keep that nice and smooth and even as we're going along. And we're going to build a taper as we get toward the head of the fly here. All right, that is just about perfect. You can see it's a little buggy looking. Got some stuff hanging off. That's all good. We're going to trim it up later. Um, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this wire. I'm going to start and just try to create even segmentation of the wire up the body. All right. And I'm going to tie it in at the back. Tie it in at the front. A lot of people like to helicopter this wire off really never been a fan of that because I reuse my wire and when you helicopter it like kind of messes up the end of your wire so then you're cutting it off and and make and having to lose material 
So I'll just bend down that little piece there and I'll start building my collar. I got enough in the collar already because I'm gonna add more with my whip finisher. So we're gonna do a little whip finish on here. Just working to keep a nice little even collar on this guy. Just enough to be able to be seen. Tie that off. Snip the wire or the thread. And now, if you wanted to, you could put a little dab of head cement or something on there. I honestly tend not to do that just because I tie them really quickly. I never really had a problem with them coming undone or unraveling. Um, and usually I don't have these flies on for very long before they're getting lost in a rock somewhere or in a tree maybe too. But um, All right, so that's our, that's our fly. We can, I'm going to leave most of this here. I can give it a little bit of a haircut if I want. I don't see any really long ones. But we'll spin this around, just kind of get a, a look at it. In general, I like the way that looks. There's a big one hanging off the back, maybe. I'll just trim that guy. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so that's the waltz worm. Really easy to tie, really effective fly. Puts a lot of fish in the net for us. Hopefully it can do the same for you. Um, and again, we're going to do a giveaway with this with this video. So um, we're going to give away a half dozen flies. So just be a subscriber on the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And leave us a comment down below letting us know what kind of fly tying videos do you guys want to see? And what kind of flies are your favorites when you go out? Like what, what, are, the, what are the ones, what are your go-to flies when you go out? I'd be interested in your feedback on that and we'll work on making more fly tying videos coming soon. I do want to keep those going throughout the year. So, all right, that's it for the waltz worm. Now let's get to the drawing for the white dog snapback hat from our last video, urinimphing the five biggest mistakes. All right, so let's get to the giveaway. I uh, just want to take an opportunity again to thank you all for blowing this video up. Uh, we had over 500 participants and 500 comments, so just totally awesome. Very excited to move on and do some of these other videos that you guys have been requesting, so we are working at those as we speak. So, But let's do the giveaway. Um, we're using a, an app called App Sortios. It's going to randomly select a comment, so I don't have to be responsible for doing that myself. Um, and we are going to be giving away a white dog snapback hat. So let's go ahead and do that drawing now. All right, so let's get ready to do this drawing. As you guys can see, 505 participants. That is so awesome. Thank you, everybody, so much. Just an absolute ton of great comments. Uh, I read every single one of these comments too, so believe me, I'm, I'm watching everything and, uh, and I'm listening to you guys. So anyway, let's get going. Here we go. And our winner is... <laughs> Tightlining Maryland out of 505 comments. It's, it's Tightlining Maryland. you got to be kidding me. Um, this is another YouTuber who loves tight lining, as, as you can see by his, uh, by his channel name. Um, if you guys don't know Tight Lining Maryland, go check this guy out. Um, he's a great fisherman. He fishes a lot of the same waters that I used to. I used to live in Maryland, and we kind of connected over a bunch of those things. Absolutely hysterical that uh, this is Mike, that Mike actually won our, <laughs> our drawing. <laughs> That's amazing. So anyway, congratulations, Mike, and... Uh, I already know how to get in touch with you, so uh, so I will be in touch for the winner. All right, so let's read his comment. I know this was a funny one because I remember it, but he's like, I make zero mistakes when fly fishing, <laughs> but I will watch this video to support a friend as well as because I'm actually still learning every trip and do many things wrong. Nice video and thanks for sharing. So, all right, Mike, I can't believe you won. That's totally awesome, though. Um, I'll send you, I already know how to get in touch with you, so I will send you a white dog snapback hat as our winner. But thank you, Mike, for supporting the channel. You've been a big supporter of the channel. I guess we've supported each other um, as small YouTubers, but thank you. And thank you, everybody, so for supporting the channel, for watching our videos, for you know, following us along on our journey, you know, everything that you guys do and support is really, really appreciated. You know, I know you guys are learning a lot along the way based on the comments that you put in there. So uh, that's, that's entirely what this is about. It's about learning. It's about having fun and having adventures. And so I appreciate all of you for joining this big adventure with us. I'm really excited to see where, where we can bring this channel 
and uh, I really, really look forward to the future. We have a lot more coming. You know, as always, if you're out there and you like what we're doing, definitely subscribe, and we will see you soon for our next adventure.